What are you doing? Why is all my GoPro equipment on the floor? Oh, I thought we were going to do some extreme filming. Oh, no, 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 no. What I said was I needed your help filming an episode of The Maker Show about using IoT devices in extreme environments, not going and doing some extreme filming. Well, don't I look rather silly with all this camera gear? I'm Frank Lavinia, and this is The Maker Show. Hello, and welcome to The Maker Show. I'm Frank Lavinia. Today, we'll be talking about using IoT devices in extreme environments. And when I say extreme, I don't mean sending your IoT device up into space or into the depths of the ocean. What I really mean is using IoT devices in non-traditional environments. For instance, if you have a smart house or a connected home or a connected thermostat, that typically will one, have power, two, be indoors, and three, have ready access to the internet. But what if one of those three is no longer feasible or part of your project requirements? Then you have to start thinking a little bit differently than you typically would. When designing an IoT solution for use in a non-traditional or extreme environment, you'll have to take into account at least three different factors. One, protecting the device itself. Fortunately, a quick look online reveals a number of options in terms of ruggedized cases, weatherproof cases, as well as waterproof cases. So that's pretty much cut and dry and straightforward. Now, the next thing isn't so straightforward. Network connectivity. Are you gonna have ready access to a network? Now, you're probably not gonna have a ethernet cable, so that means you're gonna to have to rely on Wi-Fi. Or, in some cases, you'll have to rely on cellular. So what if you put your device in the middle of a forest and you're well outside the range of cellular, and certainly well outside the range of any Wi-Fi network? What do you do then? Well, you can simply write to the data locally. Now, if you put a device in the forest and a tree falls and no one hears it, sorry, I had to make that joke. But seriously, you could write the, the data locally to the device. If you do that, then all you have to do is periodically go fetch the device, pull the data off, and then set it back in its place. However, this does mean that you will have to visit the device regularly, whether that's monthly, weekly, quarterly, or in an extreme case, annually. All of this depends on what the exact needs of your projects are. Clearly, if you wanted real-time weather data from that weather station that you put in the forest, then that's not going to work. Finally, you'll have to consider how are you going to power your device. Now, if your device is going in a location that has no network connectivity but electricity, well then, in this regard, you're all set. But what if you were putting your IoT device somewhere where there's no readily available electricity? Well, in that case, you'll have to bring your own. And if you plan on using your device in the field for an extended period of time, you're not just going to have to bring your own, you're going to have to make your own. And that's going to be the focus of today's episode, is primarily taking a solar power generator and using it in your IoT projects. It's a lot easier than you think. For my purposes, this Coleman 55 watt solar power generator kit works well for me. In fact, let me tell you a little bit about my project. A few years ago, New England faced one of the worst winters in recent memory. One of the primary concerns was that that much snowfall could result in a roof collapse. The current way that cities deal with this is they send out engineers to weigh the weight of snow upon a roof. Different weather conditions can result in different types of snow, meaning a simple snowfall amount is insufficient to determine the amount of weight that snow puts upon whatever surface it lands on. So I came up with the concept of Frosty the Snowbot that would have a load sensor and would be placed across roofs all over a city. The problem? Well, electricity. It's a violation of several building codes to just run an extension cable up to the roof. And very few roofs will have an outlet. So in order to solve this problem, 
I needed to generate my own power. And the best way to do this was with this solar panel kit. Now the solar panel itself obviously generates electricity, but the real magic is in storing the electricity. And this kit came with everything I needed to connect these solar panels to a car battery, or more precisely, a 12 volt battery. Naturally, the kit came with solar panels, a stand to assemble and mount the solar panels to, a 120 volt power inverter to convert the direct current of the system to typical outlet power that you'd find in North America. It also came with a charge controller and the all important wires to connect everything together. Once the solar panels are mounted in the stand, it's time to attach the battery. I purchased a tub to put everything in. I also have right here a deep cycle marine battery. And as you see, there are two posts here, a positive and a negative. Now, because this is using a lot more current, safety recommendations are that you use electrical gloves. Unfortunately, this is the biggest size they had at my local hardware store. The first step will be plugging in the charge controller. The charge controller prevents the battery from being overcharged. Bad things would happen if the battery were to be overcharged. The kit also came with this adapter, which provides a 12 volt socket just like the kind you would find in your car. And I connect that up to the battery as well. Now I take the power inverter and plug that into the socket. Flip the switch and it's working. Now it's time to test it out with something. I'll take this wireless webcam and plug it in. And it works. Clean power from the sun for your off-grid IoT projects. That's it for today. If you like the show, be sure to share it and if you want to know more about The Maker Show, be sure to follow The Maker Show on Twitter and follow me on Twitter at Tabletier and my website, franksworld.com. Thanks. See you next time.